Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Lon. Uh, welcome all to my presentation. Uh, we'll be looking at the BMPs uh, for reducing ammonia emissions uh, from livestock operations in particular. And uh, looking through the literature, uh, we found that uh, these uh, BMPs could be put into three categories. Those that reduce ammonia formation of production, those that reduce the fertile uh, nitrogen species, uh, mostly ammonia and also ammonia, and uh, those that uh, basically co uh, contain uh, the, uh, those species after their formation. The first strategy is, is reducing of uh, 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 ammonia production formation uh, starts with the diet changes. And this basically is the first line of defense uh, in reducing ammonia emissions. Uh, and uh, as the old adage goes, uh, what goes in is actually determines what comes out. And uh, actually here, we're looking at just balancing uh, the crude protein uh, vis a vis the amino acids. Uh, and uh, this helps us uh, in reducing uh, excretion. For the non ruminant in general, uh, you, you just have to, uh, first of all, at the onset, you have to avoid uh, any overfeeding of the protein. Uh, once you've accomplished that, uh, then you, you, do, you have to start with the nutrient balance. And uh, what literature shows is that uh, reducing uh, consumption of crude protein uh, by a single unit could reduce uh, uh, ammonia excretion by almost 8%. Uh, then for when you look at the dietary changes uh, for the luminance, uh, again, uh, you have to go again with the same strategy again. You have to avoid uh, overfeeding the protein. And uh, once you have accomplished that, uh, then again, you have to do the balance act of the, uh, the, 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 the the, the crude protein and the, the, the amino acids, uh, again, uh, to, to, to be able to reduce uh, what it leaves the body. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated for ruminants. Uh, ruminants, uh, they have the two stomachs, and uh, so you have to provide that that is adequate uh, to be uh, fermented in the lumen, and then whatever extra the cow needs in terms of uh, luminary and degradable protein uh, or luminary protected amino acids. Uh, and in combination of that, uh, especially for lactating cows, uh, they don't need a whole lot of uh, uh, the, the luminary and un di uh, digested protein. So during late, late lactations, we found that uh, reducing uh, those uh, also helps uh, in reducing what uh, and nitrogen is excreted. When you look at the BMPs that try to reduce uh, the fertile end species, these uh, we found we can, can be put into three uh, general categories. Uh, urine cyst feces segregation uh, to inhibit uh, urea hydrolysis. Uh, you can use pH reduction uh, agents and substances or you can use um, uh, substances that bind ammonia. And lastly, you can also have uh, BMPs that uh, basically uh, convert nitrogen in non volatile species uh, uh, based on uh, uh, bioconversion. Urine feces segregation, uh, this one here is founded on this basic principle here that uh, urease, urease, urease enzyme is only found in feces but not in urine. And as uh, Dr. Martin said before, if you're able to, re to reduce the intimate contact between uh, urine and feces, uh, then you, re you delay that hydrolysis. And uh, what we found when we went through the literature is that uh, the urine uh, feces regulation, they're able to reduce ammonia emissions from the bonds by about 50% compared to uh, not using, uh, not, not separating the two waste streams. Uh, pH reduction, uh, again, uh, this relies on uh, 
uh, the ammonium and ammonia equilibrium. And again, as you, as you have higher pHs, you tend to have more of the ammonia, which is subject to volatilization. And therefore, reducing the pH towards the ammonium, uh, shift the equilibrium towards the ammonium ions, uh, that uh, helps to uh, reduce uh, what, is, what, can, what is volatilizable. And in this case, uh, we, we looked at a host of what is currently being used, uh, uh, especially most in the labs. Uh, we don't have a lot of these applications in the field yet. And what you find is that uh, most of the strong acids are able to really stabilize the pH to the lower end, and therefore are better at reducing uh, ammonia emissions. Ammonia binding uh, substances uh, also work very similar to the pH reduction in the sense that uh, they hold the ammonium ions and, and therefore uh, end up reducing uh, the ammonia species, which is uh, more volatile. And uh, you have a host of uh, products uh, that uh, can be used for holding the ammonium ions uh, all the way from uh, CORIs, uh, the, the, the sphagnum moss, and a host of other uh, compounds that are uh, hidden in blood names. And uh, you can see uh, the, we have quite a bit of uh, uh, reduction of that. And what you realize is that uh, when you look at these substances, uh, selection of the appropriate application method is still uh, the, 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 the critical here. And currently, the lack of standardized uh, application uh, and evaluation protocols for these additives. Uh, Bioconversion to non volatile species, uh, basically the most uh, uh, popular method here is the transformation, uh, the nitrification, denitrification, which basically transforms the ammonium and, or the ammonia ions uh, into preferably the hydrogen gas. And uh, what we found from the literature is that uh, when these systems are designed and uh, operated uh, appropriately, they can reduce the ammonia emissions by as high as uh, 99%. But the problem is still uh, the economics of uh, both installing it and uh, operating the systems. Uh, strategy number three uh, basically is the physically containing the ammonia uh, and the ammonium species after they've been formed. And this, again, uh, fall into two major categories, emissions, capture, and treatment, where you have uh, filters and biofilters, and uh, impermeable and permeable covers, and uh, 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 large applications. Uh, biofilters uh, performances uh, are in the retracia right now. This, the, it's very, very wide ledge uh, from all the way up to 90 100%. And uh, the reason for this wide ledge uh, appears to be uh, because coming from the wide ledge of materials uh, that are used for biofilters, need for optimum moisture, uh, again, that could be different from one, play, one, one biofilter to another. Residence time, how much the gas spends within the biofilter, and how much ammonia is, is incoming with, the, 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 with the, the air, and how well the microbial community is established in the, in the biofilter. Again, the bottom line here is that uh, if the systems are well designed, uh, they, they can effectively mitigate ammonia emissions from uh, uh, livestock operations. In public covers, uh, these physically uh, con uh, contain the emissions, and uh, they could be either inflatable or floating types. And uh, in most of the cases, we found that uh, these have, have to be used in conjunction with biofilters, because once you trap the gases, the, the ammonia, uh, you need to find a way to treat it before you, you release the rest of the, the air to the, the atmosphere. Uh, permeable covers, uh, these uh, act both as a cover and also as a trap and also as a, 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 a kind of a biofilter in the sense that uh, once they get, once they trap the, the, the gases, they can start uh, biotransforming ammonia uh, into more benign uh, hydrogen gas, and uh, 
have a hot of examples of material that you can use for that, all the way from straw to, to foam. And they can either be supported or they, have, they, may not, they don't have to have a support to just be floating on the surface of the, of the, the, the lagoon in most cases. Uh, performances of uh, these BMPs, uh, uh, again, we find, we find that uh, the impermeable covers uh, basically will be a lot, be a lot better at uh, reducing the ammonia emissions. Uh, but you have to find a way to deal with that, uh, the trapped ammonia. Uh, you could also have combinations of uh, a permeable cover plus any other substance like CRI, for example, uh, in to help you uh, get better performance from, from the, the covers. So in general, in permeable covers, uh, they can generally uh, Prevent, protect up to prevent up to 100 percent of the emissions, uh, but the cost vary widely depending on the material used and the method that uh, the method of application. And uh, it's emphasized in the literature that uh, you have to consider the length of the time the covers will be in place. Uh, the need for biofilters to clean up the gas is trapped under the impermeable uh, covers. And which might lead to excessive amo uh, gaseous ammonia uh, during light application. And then the removal of the cleaner materials left behind when the use of life of the cover is over. Uh, light application practices, uh, uh, here you might see, we, you could experience uh, significant fertilization of ammonia uh, uh, once it's spread uh, to fertilize clothing passages. The bottom line is to minimize the, the, the amount of time uh, the, the manure is exposed uh, on the ground. And uh, looking at the host of application, for, uh, application uh, uh, of, of manure on, on farm, uh, it comes out that uh, whichever, whatever you do, uh, direct injection, whichever kind of injection performs better than all the other methods. Uh, and obviously they are a little bit more expensive than, than the other methods, uh, but then uh, the cost of injection or incorporation, the man incorporating the manure into the soil may be recaptured either in terms of beta clock yields uh, or uh, the benefit that could accrue from uh, less uh, cost incurred in litigating ammonia emissions. Uh, well, uh, uh, that brings me to the end of the, my presentation, but then if you really need more information, uh, 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 my colleagues and I put together a very thorough review of these BMPs. Uh, there's a paper in print coming up uh, with uh, biosystems engineering, and this would point you to a list of over other 50 citations that uh, uh, deal with this issue. And with that, I'll be able to take questions uh, sometime.